Jezebel. Well, like we mentioned last week, this is actually the second part of the story about Jehu. Uh, with all of the uh, murder and the, the killing that's, that is going on here, I refer to it as the action adventure story of the Bible. But uh, uh, some people have said that Jehu went too far. He just went too far. You know, God wanted him to go a certain direction, but, but we. I don't think so at all. Um, we try to put um, biblical events into personal Christian values. You have to understand this is not about Jehu. This is about the country of Israel. They were going through a revolution. Now, most people approach a revolution like a bulldozer. They just go in, they mass their army here, the king masses his army, they fight, and thousands upon thousands of people are killed. Jehu approach the revolution like a surgeon. He, first of all, said, when the word got out, don't let anyone leave. He doesn't want the king to find out about what, 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 what's going on. Surprise. He had to use that element of surprise. He then killed the king, just the king, and his nephew, the king of Judah. And then, and then he came back and killed Jezebel. This started the momentum. So now from the uh, strategy of surprise to the momentum, and he sends a message about the 70 sons. Now, in a revolution, any one of those sons of Ahab could have gathered an army, but he used the momentum and those 70 heads were sent to him. And then he used the piling of the heads, which was done in those days, to intimidate. And he kills the rest of the family of, uh, of Ahab. Now you have what's left is the, are all the worshipers of Baal. He has them all killed. And the war is over. Instead of thousands upon thousands of people being killed, we have relatively a small group of people being killed, particular people that would cause problems. And the results? Jehu honor, uh, God honors Jehu and gives him, a, gives him a reign, a family reign that's longer than any other king of Israel. God honors this man. Well, a few other things uh, about that. Jezebel, um, when Jehu comes to town, he, she uses a, a slur, uh, refers to him with a name that it was a commander of about 40 years before who took over the, uh, killed the king of Syria, referring to the fact that, that it was a commoner uh, killing royalty. Uh, I find it interesting, though, the two eunuchs, now, eunuchs were, men were made eunuchs so that they could care for a king or royal ladies. Uh, uh, these rarely do, do servants of a royal get a chance to express how much they hate them. Well, these two eunuchs had that opportunity and they were able to kill, kill, kill her. I want you to look at how, um, how Jehu insults Jezebel. First of all, he allows her to be killed by servants. That was an insult. Then on top of that, he rides over her several times with a chariot. That's the, that's the equivalent of the under the, under the shoe. Uh, even, even today, uh, to, 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 to have someone uh, uh, take the bottom of their shoe and hit you with it or walk on you or, or even point the bottom of their foot t towards you is an insult. Well, this was what Jehu did by riding the chariot over him. And then, and then just going in and leave, leave, just letting her lie there and then go in and have eat, you know, to eat and drink. That was an insult. <laughs> just let her lie. And then to have her become fertilizer. The ultimate, the, the fact that she would become fertilizer for the field of Naboth. It's interesting, there was a at least I've heard, 
there was an African tribe that used to that used to be headhunters, and uh, they were they were considering coming to Christ. And when they heard this story right here on how all that was left were her feet, uh, her skull, and the palms of her hands, they said, "Ah, oh, the Bible must be true," because they knew that that's what dogs left after they eaten everything else. They'll leave just that. Um, Jehu. I contend he was a great man and a great king. I want you to notice that, first of all, the two great prophets of the Old Testament, Elijah and Elisha, both of them were a part of anointing him king. Uh, Elijah talked about it. Elisha did it. Both, both of these great prophets re, re, refer to him. And as I mentioned before, his family ruled over Israel longer than any other family. And God made that happen. He purposely did that. The last thing is that he almost was the only godly king of Israel. All the kings of Israel were wicked. Jehu came the closest. If he had done just one more thing, if he had destroyed those two golden calves, those two golden calves that Jeroboam set up, they were always a thorn in Israel's side. He didn't do it. And because of that, he went into idolatry and was not the only godly king of Israel. As it turns out, none of them were. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this story. Come back next week when we continue on with, this, with story insights on the story of the week. We'll see you next week.